I'm Walter Isaacson of the Aspen Institute, and I'm here with Lynn Cheney, the author of James Madison, A Life Reconsidered. So after the Constitutional Convention, it takes him a moment or two to say, this is the best document we're going to get. And he joins with somebody who's sort of different in philosophy to write a series of papers urging ratification of it. Explain that to me. Well, I don't think at the beginning that Madison understood how different his philosophical approach was from Hamilton's. And it was Hamilton who had the idea for the Federalist Papers. So there's Alexander right. Hamilton. And there's no parties back then. We know George Washington's going to be president. There's not a Democrat, Republican, or Federalist Party. So Hamilton and Madison sort of think they're on the same page. Right. And they don't have much time to think philosophically about the Federalist Papers. They are writing at breakneck speed. At first, they edit one another's or they look at one another's entries into the Federalist Papers, which were being published in newspapers in New York. But after a while, they haven't got time to do that. And the so main point of these papers is? To convince people that they need to ratify the Constitution. Especially the state of New York. To convince the voters in New York, though Madison, I think, understood that the Federalist Papers would have a secondary value in Virginia. Right, right. And they write all of them, including Jay sort of helps a little bit. He John writes five Jay. essays, yeah. Yeah, and out of the 85, I think, right? Mm -hmm. But they write under the name Publius. Right. Why are they writing anonymously? And do people actually know who they are? Some few insiders do, but no, it's not generally known. And the idea, of course, is that Madison is a Virginian, and people in New York aren't going to be too impressed about his view of the Constitution. Madison secondarily thinks that Virginians won't be too impressed by a New Yorker, so keeping it anonymous is important. But I love the description of these two brilliant men writing the Federalist Papers at this amazing speed, and they're finishing up the last of them, the last of the essays, while the first part of it's getting set into print. I've described this to college students. It's the equivalent of writing an essay every other day for a couple of months. You could do that, mm -hmm. but these became immortal. And it is just astonishing the feat that it was. One of the ones that's truly immortal is one of the ones that Madison writes, which is Federalist 10. Mm -hmm. Explain Federalist 10 to us. Well, Federalist 10 describes why it would be possible for a republic to succeed. You know, before people had thought that a republic just would have too many different interests involved and people would be fighting from day one. What Madison saw was that if you created a large and extended republic, that the interests would be so many and so varied that no one could come to dominate. And so that was his notion, that in a great republic, an extended republic such as never had been seen before on earth, interests would compete with one another and the republic could thereby succeed and keep itself from falling underneath the monarchy. And that's part of Madison's legacy to us, is not just the Constitution, but explaining exactly what was the thinking behind the Constitution. You know, and before Madison talked about this, people had not really understood that a republic could be possible. And he suddenly opened the way, you know, not immediately, of course, but eventually for people around the world to understand that it was possible for people to govern themselves. This is a whole new thing on the face of the earth, right? Exactly, and Madison even defends that fact in the Federalist Papers, saying just because it's new doesn't mean it's bad. Look, we're about to inaugurate something that will benefit people for generations, and it's new, and that's why it uh, will be something that we will be remembered for. He didn't say that, but you know, it was so important to the founders that they would be the givers of laws that people for generations after would be affected by. And we still refer back to the Federalist Papers sometimes when we want to understand why did they write it this way in the Constitution, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.